All right, all right. I got a video today with the three things that I do at least once a week, at least once a week for my everyday carry. I'm gonna show you those three things, but first a quick analogy. So I am a fifth generation carpenter by birth. Uh, I was into that trade. I loved it as a young man. I, I ran a construction company for years. And while I'm not a carpenter anymore on a daily basis, once a carpenter, always a carpenter. And any of you guys or gals that are in professions where you work with your hands, and this could be anything from a baker or a chef to a surgeon or a dentist to a mechanic, a painter, uh, any type of trade where you're working with your hands and tools are involved. Artists, even musicians. Just think about this, the way that we treat the tools of our craft matter. And I think oftentimes uh, we have adopted philosophies where we don't need to clean these guns, where it's cool, and this isn't a cleaning video, so don't get, don't get freaked out. But we've got this like, if the thing needs to be cleaned all the time, you're, you're, you're using it wrong, beat it up, abuse it. Well, that's not cool, but I do abuse my stuff. There's a fine line between abuse and proper use, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so I have a process of, of taking care of the things that I have on me. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm in a safe direction, I'm going to unload my pistol. I'm going to lock the slide to the rear, and the first thing I'm going to do is after I verify this is clear, I'm going to take the ammunition and I'm going to get it out of the space that we're working in. We'll come back to that ammo in a minute. So the gun I've got on me, this is a SIG P365, it's got the Boresight Solutions uh, grip package on it, which we're gonna be giving some of these away. But this is what I do. I present my pistol into a safe location. Systems matter, I don't just do this wherever, whenever. Right now I'm in the secure gun vault and I've got a concrete wall in front of me. I pull the pistol out and I'm just doing a quick systems check. One of my favorite tools is an old paintbrush. I t and one thing you guys that carry guns on a regular basis understand that these things are magnets for all kinds of junk, right? This is kind of gross. This thing's been on me for about a week without coming out of the holster. And you can see there's all kinds of like lint, body pubes. It's freaking disgusting. So I've got it out of the holster. I'm gonna just give it a quick little beat down here with the brush. One, I'm knocking all that crap off of it. And I said, this isn't a cleaning video. A couple things I'm looking for. I wanna make sure that my front sight stays clean. So I take a toothbrush. This is a clean toothbrush and I just clean these sights off. I wanna make sure that there's nothing on those sights that's gonna hose me if I need them. So I clean the sights off. I look the gun over, I make sure that there's nothing loose. I check to make sure that it's lubed. In this case, it is. I've got lubricant on the gun from the last time I, I lubed it. I don't feel like I need to lube it anymore. I'm gonna lock that slide back and I'm gonna set that aside. My holster, this is huge. Screws and uh, components of the holsters come apart often. So what I do, uh, one thing is I'm gonna check the retention and the retention's fine. So I'm not gonna mess with that, but I'm gonna check all the mounting screws. That one was a little loose. That one was definitely loose. This one also adjusts tension. I'm gonna just tighten it up a little bit. And one of the things that you also are gonna wanna do right now, if those are loose, you're gonna wanna apply some Loctite. Crazy how the internet can find anything to argue about. In the comments, tell me what your favorite thread locker is. This is Loctite 242, removable, blue. Tell me what yours is, because men will find ways to argue. Remember, this stuff is glue, it's got a cure, so back the screws out, put some on the thread, let it dry, but that's huge. Something else I do, so at my house, uh, waste not, want not, I take old socks. Yes, this has gone through the washing machine, but these are like a perfect way to clean out the dust inside the holster. You just run this thing through the holster, kind of like a boar snake, but instead it's a sock snake for your holster and you get it cleaned out. Um, certain attachments uh, on the holster, screws and such, do get corroded. A good time to take a little bit of lube on those points where body uh, moisture, sweat, 
ambient moisture in the air, depending on your climate, uh, might cause some corrosion. I love these little chip brushes for that. You can touch those areas with a little oil, uh, lubricant to help uh, mitigate any kind of an issue. So the gun's cleaned up. We've checked to make sure that the sights are cleaned. By clean, I'm not talking about doing a gun cleaning. I'm talking about just being studious, knocking off all that filth and debris, giving the gun a visual, making sure everything's working. Lock the trigger back, reset, break. Lock the trigger back, reset, break. Everything feels great. Now, let's talk about ammo. Uh, being a fan of systems, I don't uh, try to manipulate guns where ammo is going to get into the gun. I want to also show you those good systems as we're making those videos. How often are you swapping out this ammo? So this stuff's expensive, right? But so is dying. So is funeral costs. So is hospital costs, etc. We have these guns to protect life and liberty. As such, you should be investing in carry ammo at least every couple months in running a box of it through your gun. Yes, it's 20, 30 bucks. Spend 20, 30 bucks every quarter. One, you're going to make sure that this stuff continues to feed reliably. Two, you're going to get good reps on with the ammo that's in your gun. You're going to make sure that that zero, et cetera, is where it's supposed to be. But also, you're going to swap out this ammo. So this gun is uh, done. I've done my little systems check on it. I'm going to get this out of the way. But I want to talk about a couple more things real quick. So then I would go through my loading process and I would get that gun back on me. If you had uh, something like a red dot on your gun. So this uh, Langdon Technical Technologies Beretta 92. I just noticed uh, that a couple of the screws, and this is not Beretta or uh, Langdon's issue, it's more of a Trigicon issue, but the SRO that's on here, the screws from moisture, a recent trip to Florida, very humid environment, both of the mounting screws had some service rust. What I do is I take our gunfighter lube, I put a little on there and I scrub uh, with just the toothbrush and I get the the surface rust kind of loosened up as well as apply some. So that's one thing to look for with a dot. How often are you changing the uh, battery in the optic? I had a friend of mine on the phone last night, a SWAT cop from down in the Phoenix area, now runs a training program for one of the largest uh, police agencies in the entire United States. And we were talking about red dots. Everybody loves them. I don't care whether you do or you don't, but we were talking about battery life. Now, think about this. What's the battery cost? Five, 10 bucks in one of these and guys push it until all of a sudden there's no battery. How about spending the five or 10 bucks once a month, once a quarter? But Mick, those batteries are designed to last hundreds of hours. I have this thing to protect my life. And you can put in the comments what you think, but for me, if I was carrying a red dot, if I was, I use irons, but if I was, I would probably at the least once a quarter, so every three months, I'd pop that battery out and I'd put a new one in. I may, if I was a copper, probably do it the first of every month. That's overkill. I need this to work if I need it to save my life. That's why I put it on the gun. So food for thought, as you're going through this systems check, look at that and develop a system of when to replace that battery. I think it's a, a good habit. Uh, just like the other holster, these duty type holsters, this is one I use in class often. I just found three screws on here that were loose. So same thing, I, mean, I haven't even touched that one yet. That one was loose get after those types of maintenance issues and make sure that you are keeping up on them. So that's the firearms related stuff. Firearms related stuff, and this isn't general gun maintenance, this is, this is a system for the weapons that you carry on a daily basis. So I want you to make sure of that. Uh, we talked about ammo, we talked about keeping the sights clean and right. We talked about knocking the dust off, toothbrush or the toothbrush and the uh, old paintbrush works great. What else? How many of you carry a flashlight? 
uh, flashlight. So I'm kind of a fanatic about good flashlights. Surefire is one of the best. I love Surefire lights. Great company, great people made in the USA. Put in the comments what your favorite light is. And yes, there's many. I've got stream lights. I've got lights from almost any of the major manufacturers you can think of. But here's my point. These batteries, especially when you're using them, they begin to diminish in brightness as soon as you start using the light. I've got a, uh, this is the EDCL1-T, and I've got a battery in here from my friends at Concealed Carry uh, Inc., which is great. It's rechargeable. You plug a, a micro USB in there, mini USB, one of them I lost track of, it's micro USB, and you can recharge this thing. I love it. I've got a couple of the batteries, so I can always swap it out. Once a week, I check. And the other thing you can do, you know, you start to lose track of whether or not the light is still bright enough for you. If you take, I'll just grab one here, I buy these things by the case, so while I am using and showing you the rechargeable, I do buy, straight from Surefire, their batteries. Have one, make a mark on it, and this will be your baseline. So I've got a, a battery that's my baseline, and if I've been using this for a week or two, I can pull this battery out, put this battery in, and check. My baseline battery is just used to check, and I could use this for months. All I'm doing is one flash. Okay, it's, wow, a lot dimmer or a lot brighter. If I'm starting to notice it's dimmer or getting significantly dimmer, it's time to swap the battery out or charge the battery. So just using another battery that you know is fresh as a baseline is a great way to do it. This might seem like simple stuff, but I don't know how often I see people with a light that is either really dim or the freaking battery's dead. I have this stuff, go back to the beginning because I want it in case I need to protect life and limb. I need it to work. Next thing, blade. Uh, I don't care what blade you carry, have a good one. Uh, I'm old school, I, I, I've got all kinds of knives. This is just a good old fashioned folding spider co. But something I'm a fanatic about is the blade having a good edge. Let me grab a piece of paper. So I, I love cooking, I love working in the kitchen. I, I love uh, having a good tool. So one of the things I wanna do is make sure that that knife is always good and sharp, right? And this knife is good and sharp. Something else, just like with the firearm, you get all kinds of body pubes and just dirt in here. Let's knock that stuff out because that that dead skin, which is gross, the hair, the 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 dust and debris that gets on the blade, also attracts moisture. That moisture sticks to that stuff that creates rust. It also creates grit. So knock that crap out of the blade and you might want to, might need to lube some of the moving parts and then I dry as much of that lube out of there as possible. Know your own conditions, uh, uh, climate wise where you're at. The next thing, and then this is not a how to sharpen a knife video, but I have a strapping block here. My buddy Mike from Auxiliary Manufacturing made this for me as a gift. And I'm gonna show it to you up close. This is super simple. So this is a, looks to be a piece of red oak, uh, carpenter eyes there. Looks to be a piece of red oak. There's a couple pieces of rubber that he's glued to the bottom. And then he's glued a piece of leather to it. And the reason that's dark is that is a strapping compound that's on there, which is really a, uh, paste, right? It's a it's a super mild abrasive, like, I don't know, 10,000 grit or something. Uh, to put that in perspective, like if you were going to sand something in your house, like you're going to sand this before you paint it, maybe you're using 120 or 220 grit uh, 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 paper. This is like eight or 10,000, so super fine. So this does not sharpen the knife. This isn't like a whetstone or a file, which is super rough. So keep this knife in good working order because one, it's safer. You do less pressure to do work. If I need this to protect myself, I want it to do what I need it to do. But if I need it as a tool, right? And that's a whole other discussion. Do you use the blade on you as a tool for general purpose things, opening a package, etc.? 
Uh, usually the answer would be no, but let's be honest. Most of us that carry a pocket knife, we use it for everything, right? So back to the point, stropping. As I go through these different tools, this more than anything, maybe every three or four days, and my wife will attest to this, the kids too, I pull this thing out on the kitchen counter and I strop away like this. Now, sharpening of blades, metal, etc., is something that you could get 20 guys, gals in a room and you will hear 20 different things. I have like super expensive uh, wet wheels, rotary wheels. I've got all kinds of different stones from around the world. That's not what we're talking about. This is a final strop, just like a barber does with a razor. And I do this uh, from time to time and it's really polishing that edge and making it nice and neat. This is just some food for thought for you guys. Uh, systems, what we're trying to do to increase survivability, longevity, is create good systems. And I think oftentimes we don't have good systems. Recently, today is the uh, 5th of January, 2022. Man, I had to think about that. And just the other day in Virginia, I do believe, on the interstate, Thousands of cars were stranded. My wife told me about this last night as we were relaxing. And I said, well, it's terrible for one, but if that was us, we would have been okay and we knew that. Not because we're super preppers, but if I leave the home in the wintertime, we live up in the north here near Chicago, we have what we need in the vehicle to get home. We have what we need if we need to ditch the vehicle and people think, oh, that doesn't happen. I live in a major city. Look what just happened in Virginia. The point is, start at what your goal is. And if you guys watch these channels of ours, my goal is to live a long, full life, which means my training, my diet, my attitude, my friends, the things I read, the, the things I watch should support me living a long, full life. The things that I have in my pocket should support me living a long, full life. The way that I take care of those things should support me living a long, full life. The way that I train with these things should support me living a long, full life. I hope that this is helpful information. I think there's a ton of great stuff now. We're in a time where there's more information available to us than ever. That is a double-edged sword though. We have a ton of bad information. We waste so much time going down rabbit holes, I call them rabbit holes to nowhere town, with concepts and ideas that don't really help us become safer or better. Simple stuff done over and over again with the purpose in mind of living that long full life often is what's gonna get us there. Don't make it hard. Don't be dickheads. Tell somebody you love them. Hey, if you guys need some good gun oil, gunfighter gun oil is the best in my opinion. I'm not just saying it. I believe it. Put in the comment section if you disagree or agree with any of this stuff. Hope to talk to you soon. Be well.